Hello, this is Michael Edwards, CEO at BioInfo Solutions. This video is part two of a series I'm doing on crowdsourcing coronavirus data. In this section, we will go over collecting the data used in this meta-analysis and preview some of the tools used to gather this information. I am starting out by showing you the screenshot of the website Gene Expression Omnibus, or GEO for short. This data repository is where most of the data that is generated by federally funded grants is located. Right now, there's approximately 130,000 data sets deposited in this repository, consisting of approximately 3.5 million samples. As you can imagine, there's a lot of potential gold in these billions of dollars worth of research information that is available to anybody with internet access. The problem is finding those studies that are relevant to your analysis and then devising a way to easily combine all this information to give you a single picture. The GeoSite does allow you to search their database by, key, by a keyword search. For this example, I've used the term coronavirus infection since we are investigating the host response to this current epidemic and are seeking studies that reflect this type of infection either directly or through a related virus. After hitting a search button, it shows 1,551 geo entries that have the term coronavirus infection somewhere in the description. We can then click on this. And now we can look for studies that fit our purpose. In this case, we are searching for gene expression studies that use the related SARS-CoV strain, mentioned in the previous background video, as a surrogate to try to understand the body's response to the current epidemic. We can click on those entries, find one down here, SARS-CoV, click on that. Now this is giving us more information on this particular study. And we also now have access to download all the samples that they used in this particular entry. Uh, downloading all the studies you plan to use can take a considerable amount of time and memory and you would still need to analyze them yourself and devise a way to combine all of these data given that many of them were done with different technologies with different sensitivity. This is not an easy process, but it can be done. Uh, I decided to take an easier route by choosing a, a data repository where they already have downloaded and analyzed these data for you. There are plenty of sites that attempt to collect all the abundant research data available in the public or private domain besides the one I used in this analysis. Some of these data sets have free access, like the excellent R2 Genomics Analysis and Visualization Platform that has collected a ton of cancer-related data, among other useful phenotypes. I chose to use the commercial base-based correlation platform because not only can I easily identify and download results for my studies of interest, but I can also use the same program to find drugs or compounds that can affect the results of my analysis, which can also impact the disease itself. Uh, we'll have more on this later in future sections in this series. Also, the parent company for this platform, Illumina, jumped at the chance to be part of this project when I mentioned to them. And I thank them for all the technical support they've given me throughout this project. Uh, thank you, Jim and Joe. Just like with GEO, we can search this database using a key term. Again, I'm going to use the same one we used on our GEO data set, our GEO database, which is coronavirus infection. And you'll notice as I type, phenotypes start popping up. Again, this is an annotated database. So Illumina has already put these key terms associated uh, with all their entries. So I can select this phenotype. And now I have 37 studies to look through. Um, I can look through all these, or I can even filter it even farther. Um, say I only want to look at those studies involved in measuring gene expression. And I only want to look for samples that have been derived from primary tissue. Uh, we chose to focus on the tissue rather than the cell culture because we wanted to not only see how the infected cells respond to the virus, but also the resulting immune system, since it's responsible for so much tissue damage in severe forms of the infection. I do not think there's 
I do think there's plenty to learn at looking at cells, and I, I could absolutely look at that aspect as, as well. But you have to start somewhere. Um, uh, once we apply these filters, we are now down to 21 studies. We decided early on that we wanted to make this a focus meta-analysis for this first pass. So we looked for studies that measured the host response early in infection. We felt that if we could understand how the body responds initially to this invasion, we could possibly alter this response to prevent the virus from gaining a foothold in the first place. We can click on these entries to see if any of their biosets or comparisons used in these studies match our criteria. In this first study, we can see that this group challenged monkeys to different strains of the SARS-CoV virus. We can then choose to include those biosets uh, that examine the lung response to the virus at day one of infection. So this, these first three up here. By clicking on the plus sign to the left of these biosets, I can include this in my meta-analysis. And they will show up in my meta-analysis app after I choose them. I want to be clear right now is that we are not downloading the raw data from these files, but using the change in gene expression compared to the control given in the bioset. The software considers any gene with a p-value less than 0.05 and an absolute fold change greater than 1.2 to be significant. The number of genes associated with a significant change is given by the number on the right of each bit data set. Uh, after going through the below studies, I was able to find six entries that contain 13 biosets that we can now view and download using the meta-analysis app. Given on this first tab are the biosets we picked to be included in this meta-analysis. You'll notice that all of these studies are looking at the transcriptional response in the lung to SARS-CoV one day after viral infection as compared to mock infection. The first three biosets listed were done in monkey models, while the rest of these were done in mice. What makes this data set we've constructed extremely useful is that we compare the changes in gene expression due to infection to the same benchmark in all comparisons, which is normal healthy lung. This gives us an anchor we can use as a reference to compare all these studies together. We can also normalize these biosets further by putting all of these gene changes on the same scale, which we will discuss in this next tab that looks at the genes that were altered in all the biosets. Given below on this tab are the genes whose expression levels were altered due to SARS-CoV infection, ranked by the number of biosets that gene was observed to change in. Each column on the side of these genes represents the biosets we picked, while the height of that bar represents the change in expression of this gene to our mock controls. The higher the red bar, the greater the increase, while green bars going in the opposite direction would signify a decrease to control. We can see that most of these top genes increase due to infection. Although when taken as a whole, most genes in this analysis on average went down with infection. If we look at some of the names on these genes, we can see almost all of them have been implicated in the inflammatory response. There are lots of interferon-stimulated genes in this list. We can also see quite a few of these OAS genes. Uh, they tend to pop up at the top of this list. These genes have been shown to be induced during viral replication and can have po positive effects like binding viral RNAs and trapping them in stress granules or negative ones, like the same gene inhibiting type 1 interferon responses that could lead to chronic viral infection. We can examine what these genes do in each study by clicking on a particular gene to get more information. This top gene, CMPK2, uh, is one that I never heard of, but doing a search on it reveals that it is involved in synthesizing an antiviral ribonucleotide that can gum up viral RNA and DNA synthesis, which is a relatively new finding for us humans. Um, it also works with a gene commonly called Viprin, which is also ranked pretty high on this list, uh, right there. 
We can go further into this gene uh, to get more information. We can get the probability that it's different than the control. Uh, we can get the full change information given over here on the right. And more importantly, we can get the Illumina score for that gene. Um, you'll notice that all of this full change activity varies widely, uh, going from 1.6 fold to uh, 51. But when we look at these Illumina scores, uh, they are all in the 90s. The Illumina scoring system is based on the magnitude of, of change for that gene compared to the other genes in that data set. The greatest change in gene expression is ranked as a 100, and everything else is scaled down to zero from this number. It is this scoring system that allows us to combine all of this information together into one data set. We can then export all of this information uh, with this button here and use the Illumina score and full change information to make our own database. The Correlation Engine platform will only allow you to download the top 5,000 genes based on the cumulative Illumina score across all data sets. What we get is a spreadsheet that looks like this. All of the biosets that we used in our study are given at the top of this table. Down below, we can see the individual genes, its overall gene score, which is based on the cumulative the sum of all the Illumina scores across all the data sets, its individual Illumina score for that particular comparison, its p-value, and its full change. Um, we can then extract the Illumina scores for each data set and use a program developed by a former student of mine, Mehdi Ahmadi, that will make this score positive or negative based on the direction of the full change. What we now have is a data set where all the change in gene expression is on the same scale. And we can tell the direction and magnitude of this change with this score. Uh, in the next video, I'll explain all the files we have available for download, and then we will start getting into analyzing and interpreting this data set. If you would like to get started now, all of these files are open to download at my GitHub account at the following URL or follow along with a series to see how I would analyze these data. Thanks for viewing, and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe.